What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here once again at Indian of Oklahoma City and it's good to be back to see a new motorcycle, the Indian Super Chief. So this is not the Limited, this is just the standard Super Chief. So this is gonna be the 111 engine. You'll notice it's got the wire wheels. Nice little attention to detail there where they put the valve stem out the side there instead of in the midst of all that so it's easier to fill up. Got the LED light right there. Floorboards versus the pegs. Kind of see you all around here. They aren't lockable. So you can see that they are there. You got these quick release little straps here. Or you can use the buckles. We'll kind of open that up real quick. So this is the side that's got the exhaust on it. So you can see, like I said, semi-rigid. So it's got that plastic interior in there. See the key fob there, because that's how it operates. We'll jump over here to the side that doesn't have the exhaust on it. That way you can take a look at that real quick. And it's got those little snaps right there. And they have it a little bit deeper on this side since there's no exhaust in the way there. Now Super Chief is already ready for passengers. You can see the seat there. Pretty decently thick little pillion seat there as I buckle that back up real quick. It's got that bob fender look once again. Offset tag. Really like the design on these, I really do. I still think, looking at the front end here, eventually we'll see a Power Plus and possibly a radiator on that here pretty soon. All right, let's go ahead and hop up on the Super Chief here and take a look at the ergonomics controls and all that fun stuff here. You can see nice wide bar down low, big grips like that. Reach to the brake and clutch are perfect for my hands. Of course, I have very large hands. And then what we have here is we got the new setup that they have right here. So we have the new power and on switch right here. So it's gonna pop this on. I've already turned it to sport mode. The way you do that, you have a back paddle over here on the right side that's behind the grip here. And whenever it pops up, you can actually set it into the modes that you would like to do. So we are good there. And then over on this side, the left side, you can see that you go back to the typical stuff. So you got your digital tachometer, voltage, air temperature, miles per gallon average, current fuel range, anticipated current odometer, and there you go, the two trip odometers after that. And of course, like I said, your gear indication, your time, bright side stand warning, maintenance warning, service engine light, left and right, tire pressure, ABS. Up there, fuel gauge right there. Of course, your engine cutoff switch here, turn off, cruise control, turn signals, hold for hazard, horn, bright, and like I said, that other paddle behind there that's hiding. All right, so let's go ahead and start giving this thing a crank here. All right, got this thing in sport mode right now, so let's take her out. All right, first impressions of the Super Chief here. As we go slowly onto this interstate for some deranged reason, welcome to Oklahoma, folks. The 111 has never disappointed me whatsoever. So when they put the 111 on the basic models, it doesn't hurt my feelings whatsoever at all. It's a good engine, it's got good power. It's got good, basically anything a low to a little bit mid high, not all the way up to the top, but good power nonetheless. It pulls this machine right along just fine. Right now we're at highway keeping speed at 65 miles an hour, and we're pulling about 2400 RPM in top gear, which is sixth on this thing. Now this one has a windshield. This one has a little bit more comfortable riding posture. Whereas the Scout Bobber and the, or the, as with the Chief Bobber and with the uh, regular Chief, you have that more mid mount control and the Bobber is a little bit more forward mount, a little bit more than mid but not much, but this one's fully forward on those floorboards. And the seat has you kind of sitting back, so when you're sitting down, your back is straight up and down, your elbows are straight away from 
you know, your shoulder straight down and then you're straight out to the bar. So you kind of have that beautiful fist in the wind posture that you get on American Touring motorcycles. Which to me is a plus. It's a nice, comfortable ride. And of course, like we like to ride our horses, feet are a little bit more forward on these. Legs are spread out pretty nicely. So you can see that the floorboards accommodate the size 14 clod hopper that is on my foot right now. You have a standard brake peg down there and standard shifter peg. This is not heel toe shifted. But you can see my knees don't really come above the tank. They're pretty much in line with it. And it's just overall beautiful seating posture. It's very comfortable. The seat, stock seat on this thing is plush and quite nice. I, this is the position I really, really want these kind of bikes to be in. When it comes to like the bobber and stuff like that, when you've got the more upright bar and everything, I'm not a m big fan of, of ape hangers, even mini apes, uh, you know, all together. Although they are comfortable at times, I just prefer just this kind of nice, lazy cruising posture right here. Now you can see my legs have a slight bend forward to them but everything is pretty much in line. So my knee backs up to my hip, straight line, and then a little bit forward to the uh, floorboards to my feet. And it's just a nice little posture. And of course the ergonomics on this thing, of course, of course the ergonomics on this thing are perfect. Like everything is in thumb reach or finger reach and absolutely beautifully laid out. Downshifts and upshifts are very smooth from the transmission. Of course, Indian has always used cable operated clutches. So the pull is, why, man? So the pull is a little tight, but not terrible. And of course, we're, we're, we're gonna be uh, taking this over the standard Oklahoma roads and how terrible these things are and you can see we're bouncing around on this here and you know the chief really is set up really well I like what they did with the suspension yes it's a little bit shorter travel than I was expecting whenever they were announcing it but you know they did it in such a way that it is nice and comfortable it's got very good geometry the fatter tires on this one hold the road a little bit differently. In fact, I like the way this one steers a little bit more because there's a little bit fatter, meatier tires on this one. So it doesn't transfer as much road jitter to you because there's a lot more rubber there to absorb it. But like I said, the suspension is perfect as well. In fact, I'm not really being upset by any of these harsher bumps or anything like that. I'm able to accelerate back away and get back to riding. See there, cruise control simply turn it on by pressing it in, going to the left to set it, going to the right to resume some speed or add some speed to it. Rock the throttle forward if you need to to shut it off. See the indication right there that cruise control is on. It will have a little arrow pointing to it if it's set. Now I have to say that with the windshield that's on it, that is a very nice amount of dead space right there. It doesn't chatter or anything. Like I don't have any helmet chatter or anything like that. I'm six foot tall with a 32 inch inseam. So the way I sit on this bike seems to be perfect for the windshield height. I can see above the windshield with my eyes. I know the GoPro is right below the line, but eye-wise, I can see right over the windshield just fine. And it's doing quite a bit of good for the wind that we have here in Oklahoma in blocking that out. It's just holding this highway perfectly. Man, this is, this is the chief. This is, the super chief is the chief I would definitely get. 
I would probably step up to the limited so I can get the 116 and all the fanciness because I kind of I'm kind of getting those creature comforts and understanding how nice they are having it with the FTR and the ride command on it I'm able to zip around music and stuff without pulling my phone out or messing with anything it's just all seamlessly into my headset and everything like that so if I want to listen to music then I can do so and I like that feature I'm getting to like all these little nuances and funness you know I don't know at first I thought I would never like them but now now I understand after having them for a little bit the only thing I still don't get is speakers on a fairing because I barely use those on my Chieftain when I had it I usually actually still ended up using mostly the headset for that kind of information and that's that's exactly what this is it's that more bare bones approach you know kind of like your heritage soft tail you know and other and other models like that which I have to say that the heritage soft tail 114 and this one very much well are very comparable with the soft tail being actually slightly a little bit more modern in design because of the single mono shock in the rear so i have to do i do have to give some harley davidson some props for that that they actually do have a little bit more modernicity when it comes to that chassis having that mono shock in the rear and how it reacts it's a that's a pretty good riding machine i liked it so much better than the original heritage soft tail but this would be more akin, to be honest, if you're going to look at lines, to a Dyna Switchback or something like that. Which, if you compare this platform to a Dyna, this one is heads and tails and everything above the Dyna chassis. The way it's done, the way it's balanced, the way it rides, it doesn't have any weird flex or motion in it. The chassis seems very tight at all times, whereas the Dyna was a little bit floppy at times. So comparing these two, you're looking, of course, at the past, not the present. So like I said, good job, Harley, on the new soft tail chassis when it comes down to modernicity, but good job, Indian, for taking something that's retro and making it such a good package as well. This seriously is like the perfect motorcycle ride right now. This is, this is motorcycle nirvana for an American rider. Seriously, this is the perfect positioning. Fist in the wind, legs out, nice seating position, nice and comfortable. I mean, it is just fantastic. Now, engine braking is exactly as you'd expect from the 111. And also, acceleration's exactly as you expect from the 111 in sport mode. Compliant and ready. Regular braking on this one, of course, you are dealing with a single disc in the front, single disc in the rear, and braking is really adequate on this motorcycle. In fact, I think it has some of the better bite for a single, uh, single disc or up front. Really progressive brake. Easy to modulate, too, on both front and rear. You can definitely feel them both working and you know where they are and what they're doing. And I really like that it, the, the machine definitely talks to you as you're going about what you're doing. You can see them on this horrifyingly broken road right here. and It's taking it like a champ. You can see that wind. Like I said, we got plenty of wind out here in Oklahoma. I'm going directly into it now. And, you know, this is great place to be just a fantastic place to be <laughs> wow go over all this brokenness and some gravel even nice and stable though that's the good news wasn't really expecting this i haven't been out in this way for a very long time because of covid and not having very many motorcycles to take for a long ride or even a short ride so that was a little bit unexpected to come down through here and see all this mess. That's a nice old international harvester. All right, well, let's get through the dirt clods and continue on. At least you know it's ready for the unexpected, that's for sure. We're going over all this harsh material and loose material and nothing really swaying or lovely chief here 
like I said, hitting these pretty good bumps, doing all that. It's doing a very good job, man. I'm impressed. I really am impressed with the Chief platform. I know some people have kind of written it off as being archaic and overpriced and some other things. I just, I just don't see it as being as such. I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit overpriced here and there, but when you look at the market and you look what's around it and you look at the motorcycles that's in its class, it's right with them in price and in some cases beats them because it has some of these features that you simply cannot get on the other motorcycles without adding a whole lot more that will put them well over the price that this one's coming in at. And the way this chassis is and the way the lightness is, the way it feels, you know, this is just what a light tourer should be. He could even go beyond light touring with this and take this across the country. Now it's around the mid 80s right now. And uh, to be frank, when it comes to any heat coming off of this machine, even sitting still, I don't feel much at all. Of course, like I said, I'm a bad indicator for heat because I seem to have gotten used to it after the night rod, but it feels like the flow on this thing is fine. It's not blowing any hot air under the seat and starting to toast up anything down there. It's not blowing anything on the thighs or anything like that. I don't feel anything on the lower part of my leg. Everything is just perfect. I mean, this thing just is ready for long range riding and enjoyment. burbling around at city street speeds, 45 miles an hour, you're barely pulling 1700, 1650 RPM. Motorcycle's not bogging in any way. It's just wanting to kind of hold that speed. And just let you cruise and look around. And that's, that's the thing about a motorcycle. You want to get lost in the ride. And this, this definitely is a motorcycle you can get lost in the ride with. That's for sure. Man, it's so comfortable. and get ready for a run up here. Transitions nicely. Getting up to speed for the interstate. I know we're in the construction zone, but does so with vigor, does so really well. By the way, the mirrors are fantastic on this. I love the way they're very wide out. And I can set them up to not even see any part of me at all if I wanted to. Right now, they're kind of set up as the way I pulled them out. I didn't actually change the mirrors because I could see just fine and just left it at that. So I can see a little bit of my elbows, but everything clean behind me. I can see all lanes of traffic I need to do. And that's a good place to be. Man, this is... This motorcycle is just a good place to be. This is just fantastic. It's comfortable through here too. I mean, it's one of those things where this is a great motorcycle for everything. It's, it's great for taking around town if you need to get some stuff and throw it in the bags. It's great for going on a long trip. It's great for just going bar to bar. It's great for whatever you want to do, seriously. I mean, it is fantastically set up. And no, I'm not paid by Indian of Oklahoma City. No, I'm not paid by Indian themselves. I really do believe this about this motorcycle, that this is one of the best all around machines that you can get a hold of right now.
and it really does just travel so well. And the way, like I said, the weight of this thing is perfect because it, it's nice and light. If you don't want to go all the way to the Chieftain and handle the, you know, 800 plus pounds of that machine, and you want to stay somewhere a little bit less, about 100 pounds less or so, this one feels so much better. Like the weight on this thing for touring is just perfect. I mean, the motorcycle responds perfectly to input to handlebars. The weight of the chassis, you can put your body into it and you can see it will go with you. You don't have to fight any weight whatsoever. It's with you. And that's the great part. That's the perfect part about this machine. Is it's just a good all around in-betweener that allows you to get this kind of ride and enjoy it profusely. Like, I mean, my goodness, is it comfortable? My goodness, is it a good ride? The windshield is perfect. I do have enough airflow on this hotter day around me, but I have enough dead air here to keep that from beating me up, throwing my neck around with the helmet, anything like that. No chatter at the top of the helmet whatsoever. Overall, man, this is just a really, really good package. A really good light tourer. This, this is the Chief. The Super Chief is the Chief I would go with for sure. Absolutely comfortable ride. I don't care about the speed. I don't care about raw horsepower all the time or anything like that. What can it do on a nice long cruise? And is it comfortable? Does it do that well? And this one does it very, very, very well. Add the 116 if you want to be a little bit hotter. Sometimes I like to be a little bit hotter, but <laughs> some people know that I kind of drag floorboards and break exhaust pipes that are low to the ground if I have that kind of power. Because sometimes I think I have a little bit more motorcycle than I really do <laughs> when, I, when I have that much power and uh, that little room to work with. So. This right here reminds me, it's just a nice cruiser and it just wants to cruise and just politely does so in a perfect way. So yes, the Super Chief is a recommended machine. Definitely to me, the top of the, the breed when it comes to the Chief. So highly recommend that. If you have not rode one yet, please go out there and ride one and find out for yourself. Indian of Oklahoma City is glad to let people do test rides and get you guys to form your own opinion about it, not just take my word for it. Also, thank you once again to Law Tigers of Oklahoma and also AGB Sport USA as well. And shout out to Doug Crawford with Amsoil here in Oklahoma. That man has been helping us keep our bikes protected from the mechanical wear and tear that they can experience with inferior oil. So at any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride.